So it's an exciting day today. We uh, just towed this car over here back from our shop to Black Forest Racing. We are going to weld in the center support bearing mount for the drive shaft, weld up our other differential because we had some problems that we will probably go over later. Like the Haldexes don't fit in Mark V. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. <laughs> According to Max's research, which was clearly <laughs> shitty research. And on today's episode, Paul is replaced by my good friend Cody. You've probably seen him from when we built this car originally. I'm like Paul, but with less hair. So we're about to weld in the center support bearing for the drive shaft, which is over there where he is. That's what holds the middle of the drive shaft up. That is under the car, kind of where your exhaust would go. Reason I am getting up here on the ladder is because it's right up against the carpet and we may or may not set the car on fire a little bit. So I've got a uh, spray bottle in case that happens. I feel like you're excessively far away. I don't want to be in the fire zone. I need to be far enough away to open the door. Looks like the factory put it there. Not exactly. Over here where I blew a hole, it kind of went badly, but. <laughs> this is the uh, diff from the R32, which actually fits in this car. Unlike the Passat diff that we tried before, putting this in so that we can mock up the drive shaft position, make sure that we get the center support bearing mounts completely centered where they belong. So we've been debating on whether this rear wheel drive setup is gonna work or not. Um, when we get it back together, we're thinking, it's probably, my thoughts are it's about 50-50. Either it's gonna work great, do burnouts, be fine, or it's gonna slip the clutches in the Haldex and then not work at all. The other thing is if the clutches do hold and it all goes to the back, the diff may just explode because it's quite small as if you walk over hey, here. Hey, come over here. My opinion is that the, uh, we have a 10% chance of it working and a 40% chance of this just exploding because this ring gear is tiny. And uh, the other 50% chance is I don't think the hall axe clutches are gonna be able to hold the power. I think it's gonna slip the clutches. We will see. <laughs> and if it doesn't slip the clutches, it's going to break that. This is the ring gear out of a, uh, a Porsche 915 transmission. Where these are known to break around 300 foot-pounds of torque and that's significantly bigger than this <laughs> thing. So big one breaks at 300 foot-pounds of torque. Yeah. And how much torque does this car make currently? 530? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know that much. <laughs> Are you enjoying your popsicle? I am. Um, what just happened? Uh, yeah, which we knew, but I've just discovered that part of it's plastic, so now we need to put it out. Stop. That's not how that works. It just spreads it out and it runs everywhere. <laughs> oh! Easy. All right, now put it out. Is it out? Yes. <laughs> it's not out. Hit it more. It's on fire on the bottom. Well, now it's all wet. Wow. So we've got the old downpipe that I made before this thing had a prop shaft in the way here. But I'm gonna start by just kind of shoving this thing up there and seeing where we end up. So an incredible thing here is that this <laughs> almost fits. It's, it's kind of amazing. So I'm gonna be able to reuse most of this and I'll just have to redo the bend that's up by the turbo. Well, cut it here. Just need to basically do the redo this piece up here and then we will be done. <laughs> Those are the ones you did. Oh. Those are the ones I did. Oh. They're very bad. <laughs> this is... Hey, it's your, it's your first time. That one, the big one, I don't think that one's going anywhere. No, that one's not going anywhere. That one is questionable. Also, banana for scale. Um, where did that banana come from? The fridge. It was looking not great, so I took it out of the fridge. I had to add 
three and a half inches here to get just out and around the drive shaft. Right up in here, it's really, really close to the wastegate. So I'll probably after I finish welding and everything, I'll probably just dent it a little bit right there to get it around the wastegate. You can go watch the Engine Masters video and they'll show you that denting, it doesn't make a damn bit of difference too. So big hammer. <laughs> they did it on the dyno on Engine Masters and proved that it doesn't change anything at all. So about to put this uh, diff that you just saw me weld horribly in <laughs> and uh once cody's done with the exhaust and she's over there welding right now see if this works or if it is uh just a catastrophic failure yeah so there's where the interference with the wastegate is so if i wave it around a bunch it'll make scratch marks so i'll know where it's hitting and oh, i can smart. bang on with a hammer that's super smart ow i'm gonna perform a custom modification to get this to finally fit the way that i need it to That might work. Hey Max, do you like your new modification? High quality. Now that's what I call high quality a tool. What's that hammer doing? <laughs> this is this is MC hammer. Camera time. Good now. He just wants to throw the drive shaft out of balance. I know this isn't gonna come close, but I want to see just why, how, where. This is yeah. the front wheel drive yeah. exhaust system. And now uh, the muffler is supposed to be inside the gas tank. <laughs> All right. If you just made it straight, though, yeah, just get it straight with a, like a flat muffler. We should just transition it from flat or, or, or circle to oval and just go straight out the back and cut the diffuser angry. out. Cody's got the downpipe done. We still have to put some spark plugs in it because ones that are in there are fouled. Do the misfiring that was occurring. Yeah, cut to the footage <laughs> of me with the crack crackle pop tune. Put spark plugs in it. We gotta put the end on the battery cable in there because I reran battery cable and bleed the clutch. Diff and everything is in, bolted tight. Once the front of the drive shaft is in, which we probably need to find bolts for that or cut those down that aren't gonna hit. So I have maybe another thing that we have to deal with. We gotta tighten these bolts and then see what, oh. Also, cause this list just can't go on <laughs> long enough for us in the next 30 minutes. Drain the fuel that's in the tank because it's God knows how old, and put fuel in it, then we should be able to run. So last night they were gonna try to get everything together to get it started and try to see if it runs right. Uh, they ran out of time and didn't have the stuff to actually fix the battery. So we are gonna load this thing up in our trailer and bring it back to our shop, hook up with all the battery stuff and then uh, get this thing started. And then we're gonna do some drifting. Skirt. Okay, so we checked over everything. We should be ready to start up. So now this is our first startup since we have everything installed and something's wrong. Max, are you sure everything's connected back there? Yeah, it's all good back here. It's got power. Uh, we have a problem. So after attempting to turn the crank uh, via the actual crank pulley, it is locked up. So we have to figure out why and we knew this ran before, so it could be related to the transmission, so we need to try to get inside there to see what's going on. Thankfully, we have our handy dandy borescope. The starter on this car is out, so we're sticking this borescope down through the starter hole to see if we can actually see what is hitting to verify. We believe we know what's going on, but we want to verify by looking at it with the borescope. <laughs> it's right in front of us. Oh my God. We didn't have to go very far, so as you can see, that bolt right there Right here is touching the pressure plate and you can see even taking some of that sticker from South Bend and kind of grinding it up. So uh, that is what we're hitting on and why it's locked up. And my guess is probably maybe not the only bolt that's doing that. There may be more than one. The pressure plate's hitting the transmission bell housing and that, and that bolt right there for the inside of the transmission. So uh, that's a problem. The reason why this car wouldn't start is because it was locked up with the engine and trans locked together. Uh, we believe what we may be able to do to accommodate this situation is to just move the transmission out. We did check some measurements of some different transmissions to attempt to verify the depth 
there's a, some variation between the inside of them that could be a problem, but uh, we believe a spacer might be able to help us with this. So we're gonna try to get a spacer made to solve this problem. Okay, so it took us a little bit of time and we took a factory uh, spacer between engine and trans and had a spacer made. This is a five millimeter spacer that should allow us to use this trans based on the measurements we have. So today we're gonna get this thing up in the air, try to see if we can get this thing installed and then hopefully drive this car. We haven't really explained this in detail yet, but this control module that we have kind of dangling right here from this thing that hurt my knee in episode one, uh, this is actually what makes all the rear wheel drive possible. So this is an all wheel drive controller that allows you to engage and disengage this baby right here. Uh, without that, this would just be a, a very large paperweight and it wouldn't turn at all. So what this gives us the ability to do is with full programmability, allow us to either program it to full lock up 100% of the time or have it speed related or whatever. Obviously that would be for all wheel drive. Uh, but given our circumstance, we're gonna have it at full lockup. And so, uh, yeah, this goes into your CAN bus system here, which is wired in temporarily until we get it permanently mounted, uh, just to verify everything functions the way it's supposed to. With the app, you have the ability to use all these different controls, throttle speed, uh, different maps for different things. But if you do manual lockup, you can just hit that and you can see where the variability you would like to split between front to rear but 50 50 is 100 for us because we got no front axles <laughs> so 50 50 is 100. so we install our spacer between the trans and the engine in theory based on all of our predictions this should solve our problem and this thing should start right up interesting i don't know dude if you guys put a little bit of gas in there all right, well, I guess maybe try to put some, get some gas. We have any gas here? It's alive! It sounds really bad. With no exhaust on it. So we got the app paired to our Haldex controller, have it in 50-50 lock mode, and we don't have front axles in it. So we're gonna see if we can get only the rear tires to spin. So this is, this is the moment of truth? Yeah, this is, well, the moment of truth is when we really try to drive it out. But this is <laughs> the first of a series of moments of truth. <laughs> All right, put it in gear! if it moves on the ground. So the next moment of truth? The second moment of truth in the series of moments of truth. We'll see if it breaks the uh, differential immediately. I couldn't get first still, <laughs> but hey, we drove around a circle. Yeah. That's the next in a series of exciting moments. <laughs> we gotta put bolts in the wheels, make sure everything's tight. Get a real shifter in there. Maybe an exhaust. <laughs> it's very fumey in here. You hear those pops are really loud. Yeah. 
Is it making a flame at all? Hey, you know what? The diff didn't explode. Not yet. <laughs> There's still time. I don't know if it's running 100% yet because we didn't get into boost. I was kind of sketched out. I only had second gear. All of the bolts or wheels are probably loose with only three <laughs> bolts in them. There's a lot to be dealt with before we go on a drive, but it worked. There are no front axles in the car. So what you're about to see is our first semi-successful attempt at a donut. I ended up going back to my buddy's shop in Black Forest to extend the exhaust out just to kind of get it out away from everything. And um, one thing led to another, so we ended up doing some donuts. Someone got a little impatient. Well, we did donuts for, I don't know, what was that, 15, 20 seconds? And the ground was actually even wet because it had been raining, so I thought everything would have been fine. But as I was trying to swing our donut around, it just suddenly stopped and didn't want to go anymore. What I initially thought happened was that something with the drive shaft came loose because I kind of heard a clanging and clunking noise. It's kind of what it sounded like. But uh, we pulled it back inside the shop to try and see if we could figure out what happened. Okay, so transmission seems to not be working after beginning donuts. We're gonna pull this drain plug and uh, see if any terrible metal chunks come out. The oil looks nice and clean. The only bit of potential damage we can see is right there. It looks like those uh, drive shaft flange has been hitting that transmission case a bit and it's all silver. Everything else roughly looks as it should from the outside. So that's the sound that we're getting. If we had broken something in here, there probably would have been metal shavings or chunks or discoloration or something. It looked fine when we drained that out on a towel. There are no chunks or anything. Um, I'm thinking the problem lies in here. I can tell you the problem isn't back here because when it's in gear and the drive flanges that normally where the front axles would attach to are spinning, um, the drive shaft is not spinning. So that means the problem is up there because the drive shaft should always be spinning um, when the clutch is out in, in gear. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this exhaust off and this drive shaft and try and get up there and see if we can figure out what's going on. Well, there's your problem. Oh. <laughs> I, I believe we've located the problem. <laughs> if that gear means. come loose, it could have just had way too much lash. It appears as though we have some metal shavings, a few shards, if you will, Where now that I'm looking at? at it. Oh, well, they're falling on my hand. Here they are. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, That's what's uh, left of the pinion. This it's is... That's insane. After a 20 second donut. It smells like burnt oil. Mm -hmm. You should be able to see whatever. Oh, it is. It did come out. That was awesome. Okay. Whoa. So. It doesn't look like it's spun, though. There's no witness marks at all. Yeah, no, there's no way that, well, that spun. It's also not like black, like, you know, like a bearing when it gets super hot, like this here. The thing is, this could have been a fluke. Probably isn't, but like, <laughs> I mean, there's the TTRSs and stuff, which. They could just have a better version of this in there. They're running eight second quarter miles. Yeah, because you're putting a hell of a lot more power. What's the solution to this? Because obviously we still have well, to drift it. Well, first we need to figure out. So to show you what we think happened, we have to take a field trip. So let's take a field trip. Right now we're comparing the internal components of the bevel boxes on a. This is actually a Golf R transmission. Uh, don't don't worry about what this <laughs> situation is with the hole I cut in it. And all these, all these pieces that are st that are inside here. Don't worry about those. Uh, you can check out a video that I took that this transmission apart. Uh, we'll link to it in the description. Uh, here is the component that drives the prop shaft, and here's the one that came out that we destroyed. 
on the on the GTI on the Mark V, and that's on a TT trans. This is the one out of the Golf R trans. So this one is actually bigger. And so if we show our measurement here, 101 millimeters. If we compare that, you can see there's quite a big difference there on the older 18T one, 92. So we're talking about a 10 millimeter difference. So our neighbor next door to us builds transmissions for race cars, NASCAR particularly, but a lot of different racing, and he does a lot of the, the top performing teams. He told me that his his perspective is that this may have been caused by a bearing flex that allowed the teeth to jump. So uh, that would make sense that if you had a more substantial bearing, like the newer ones have, that we could have less of a concern. So we're gonna, because we have our spare, we're gonna send it with this one and see if it blows up again. Uh, so we're gonna install that now and then we're gonna find out. Fortunately, we have our spare transmission for our bevel box to go for round two. Uh, this trans was actually uh, provided to us by Wolf Auto Parts. If you're not familiar with them, they specialize in uh, VW Audi, BMW uh, salvage cars and they part out stuff. They have a really good site in terms of pictures and cataloging their stuff. So uh, make sure you check them out if you're looking for used stuff like this for a project like this. They're the plug for used stuff. Way cheaper than if you were to try this, buy this new. Yeah, if you bought this from us, you probably would re regret it. <laughs> it costs more than your car. <laughs> this is a Mark 7 bevel box that would, it was on blowout. Um, so I bought it in case we Terrible. exploded the all track one because we've done some pretty silly, stupid stuff with it. Um, so I bought it because it was on blowout and we might do some more silly stuff with the all track. So yeah, this won't work for this. Um, we were hoping that it possibly could work for this. It turns out it doesn't look like it's not. It looks like it's pushed the axle out. It is, and yeah. also it's because the gearbox is shorter. Yeah. Because the, these are touching here, but it's not sealed into the transit. Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, this one won't work. The depth me. is different. Now we're over the shop. We're gonna throw the bevel box in and then go for burnout round twa. Twa is three. Oh, duh. All right, last time we were here, tried to do some donuts right over there and uh, transfer case blew up. Almost immediately. Last <laughs> Basically like seconds. 20 seconds, maybe 30 for being mm -hmm. generous. And now we've put a different transfer case in from same type of transfer case, just a different one. We don't, we don't have high hopes. I think it's very likely that it's just going to blow up almost immediately like the other one did. There were little chunks of metal that, you know, we probably already <laughs> showed you in the video. Doesn't bode well, but let's see. did it we have done it we've made a rear-wheel drive volkswagen using all volkswagen parts and it didn't break immediately that time why didn't it break <laughs> don't question it <laughs> don't look a gift horse in the mouth yeah it didn't that's the important part yeah so, and we even went to second gear so Ooh. if you want to do a rear-wheel drive car buy one of our haldex controllers and take your front axles out <laughs> and weld your rear diff it's smoky in here. Let's, let's close this thing up. <laughs> it smells like rubber. It's rich mahogany. So we succeeded in our quest of making a rear-wheel drive Volkswagen. 
uh, we used uh, it faux wheel drive. So we have these shirts. Uh, we have them made specifically not for this, but uh, relates to faux, faux, faux wheel drive being Haldex systems. It's kind of a joke, obviously. Uh, some people get a little upset about that. Uh, but because we don't have a place for us to really test do drift stuff yet, uh, we, we did test the vehicle to the best of our ability. It did hold up well, uh, as you saw the clips of the donuts. We potentially are gonna take it to some drift events in the future, but that is something that is gonna take some time. And we are wrapping up this series, considering it a win, I would say. I'd say so. We appreciate you guys watching along. If we'll have links to these shirts. They are on a limited time pre-order, linked in the description below. <laughs> if you like this video series, we may do some drift events with the car, something like that. So be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it. Bye. Also buy these shirts. Yeah. Act now before it's too late.